Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and um, that is our prayer for all of us, that we would grow deeper in our walk with God this year. In fact, that is why we're having this series right now called Word View, so that all of us somehow would be inspired to grow more in our um, Bible reading, in, um, and in effect, you know, growing in our relationship with God. Uh, my name is Christian. I'm one of the pastors here at Victory Fort, and we're so glad that you can join us here in our 11 a.m. service. For those of us li watching live stream, we're so happy as well that you are uh, watching us. We pray that God would speak to you as well as you're watching this feed, and we hope to see you next week here in our services. We hope as well that you would invite more friends um, to our services. Um, I see that, you know, there's less and less seats here in the 11. We still have um, plenty of seats in the 9. And so if you happen to wake up earlier or if you want to wake up earlier, please do invite them at the 9 a.m. service. Last week, we concluded our five days of prayer and fasting. And um, any one of you here, you joined, you participated, you know, um, um, in our prayer and fasting. Can we give these people a big hand? Congratulations for fasting. Some of you here, perhaps, you know, um, instead of fasting for food, maybe you've opted to fast from um, social media or from, um, seguro, entertainment, whatever. Um, but many of us here, we participate by fasting from uh, food. My wife and I decided to fast um, uh, with uh, liquid fast coming dalawa. And so when you say liquid fast, it means um, you only take in um, liquids like juices and soups and so... Um, somebody asked me the last time, Pastor, what if the burger falls in the soup? Okay, can you eat the? Uh, can you take that as soup as well? Okay, so bahala na kayo mag-usap ni Lord. Okay, <laughs> kung um, how will that? Ano? But you know, we had a, a great time. We had um, um, a time wherein we sought the Lord and prayed for one another. In fact, in our prayer meetings here in the function hall and also in the assembly hall. We've had, um, you know, we prayed for different areas. We prayed for the next generation. We prayed for one another. We prayed for the nations of the world. We prayed for the nation of the Philippines, which personally one of my highlights um, was being able to pray for the mayor of the gig. The mayor of the gig went here, and she came with the vice mayor and also um, a counselor. Counselor Noel was here as well, and so we were able to pray for them and bless them, and also the police force of the gig. You know, we were able to bless them. One of my highlights as well was to hear the testimony of um, one of the police officers who somehow um, went through our outreach. If you're familiar, we had an outreach with uh, police officers, uh, I think around October or November last year. And one of them testified how God changed his life and how he met Christ and now is living all in for Christ. And so amazing what God can do. Amen. Now, in the prayer and fasting, uh, again, we prayed for one another and we also heard of different breakthroughs personally. And I want to share with you some of the answered prayers that they got. No? There's this person. Um, she said, I'm grateful. I'm thankful that God did not ignore my prayer for my father to be healed from tuberculosis and remove the water from his lungs. Praise God for that. Amen. Also, my boyfriend fasted and prayed for his blood pressure to decrease from 220. Okay, wow, parang eroplano na yung ano niya, yung tibok ng puso niya. But it became 140. Thank God for that. We pray that it will go, the, go down to a normal level as well. Um, there's this guy, uh, person again. My father asked my mother for forgiveness. After many years, imagine that, after many years of bitterness. And I was able to introduce God to a lot of my friends, colleagues, and even to my Japanese students. Can we give God a, a praise for that? God really answers prayers. Um, there's this girl who said, okay, after 34 years of waiting and praying, okay, now I'm married, okay. My husband and I tied the knot on December 29, 2017. It was quite a journey, but it was worth the wait. God wanted me to pursue him first before I met the man who would end up pursuing my heart, okay. It is always rewarding to put God first and to wait for his Perfect time. Okay. You know, some of you, you are still single. Hang on there. Okay. 34 years ang peg natin. Okay. Mga kapatid. Okay. 34 years. Kaya pala ni Lord. Okay. So, I talked to the one who wrote this. Sabi naman niya, I mean, she counted pala even her birth. And so, that's why uh, 34 years yung nalagay niya. But, in effect, mga 20 years lang daw. Okay. So, uh, but you know, God is, God is there. And for those of you who are single, we're praying that, you know, if you desire to get married, you, you know, we're believing that God would, you know, bring you um, the partner that you've been praying for, okay? Marami pa naman tayo yung prayer and fasting, okay? So, kapit lang, kapit lang. Um, 
during the fast, as I mentioned, we did the water fast, and so uh, liquid fast. And so my wife and I, a week prior, uh, we went to the grocery, and we had to buy some uh, supplies so that we can um, be sustained in the liquid fast. And so we bought some soups, and we also bought some uh, I mean, juices. And in order to buy the juices, I mean, we had to look at the labels, because when you look at the labels, it has to say that it's 100% pure juice. Otherwise, it would be uh, filled with sugar and um, just water and sugar and artificial flavoring. And instead of you having the energy during the fast, that will make your head hurt even more. And so it's bad to take in sucrose every time prayer and fasting. And so um, make sure that you choose the one, the, those that are 100% pure. In fact, even though it pays more, it, it costs more, it's okay because it is pure. Now, in other areas as well, I'm sure that all of us can say here that we value things that are pure. In fact, we are willing to pay more if things are actually pure because we value purity. For example, in water, many of us here, we buy different kinds of filters at home so that what we can serve to our family is pure water or distilled or um, at least filtered water. When you buy water, you know, um, um, to drink for your child, especially if it's an infant, if that person is an infant, you know, you would buy those that would promise you 100% pure. Will you buy water that says 98% pure? I mean, you wouldn't, right? I mean, you would think, ano kaya yung sinama dun sa 2%, ano? And so you value pure. Uh, for example, even in, um, in honey, if you want to buy honey, you also would want to buy something that is 100% pure honey, not just melted sugar because that will cause you diabetes. But pure honey is good for you. In fact, I've learned that for you to, uh, a good honey, a pure honey, will not, uh, it will not rot. It will not, 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 so that's why we're willing to pay more for that. Even with other things like gold, for instance, when it's pure gold, then it actually costs more. But yet people are willing to spend more, to give more, even if it costs them more. People are willing to do so in exchange for having something that is pure. See, in a spiritual sense, the same thing is true. Do you know that we have a God who also values purity? There is a God who desires for you and me to be pure. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4.3, God's will for you is to be holy. Can you look at the person beside you and say, that's God's will for you? That's the will of God for every single one of us here. God's will for every single one of us here is so that we would be pure. When we say pure, it means we are in right standing with God. And when we say we are pure, it means that we are living rightly. God. That's what it means to be pure. In 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 7, For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. You see, God values purity because He is a pure God. He is a holy God. And He cannot stand. In fact, impurity cannot stand in the, in the presence of God. Impurity will be destroyed if it stands in the presence of God. And that's what sin is. Whether it's through our mouths, whether through our thoughts, whether through our conversations, or even the way we act, you know, impurity does not stand in the presence of God. In fact, a picture of this, you know, in the future, the Bible says in Revelations, it says there, nothing impure will enter heaven. Nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Why do we need to be pure? Why do we value purity? Because the Bible says in heaven, in the future, nothing impure will enter the kingdom of God. You see, God values purity so much. And God desires for people to be pure that God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago so that you and I and even the generations prior to us and the generations after us can experience purity in spite of us being impure. That's how much God values purity. He was willing 
to send His one and only Son. What a price it is that God was God paid so that you and I can experience purity, so that you and I can experience wholeness. The Bible says, um, um, you know, that this is the Word of God, but yet it also speaks of the challenge of living this way. Now, many of you perhaps can also identify, you know, with what Paul said when he said that he wanted to do the right thing, but sometimes he would do the things that is not right. It's hard. I mean, there's a song that's that, na Because in reality, um, even us as individuals, we are somehow weak and we cannot live a pure life. Left to our own devices, left to ourselves, we cannot do that. Not to mention, we live in a society that is so um, somehow infected with sin that it is making, uh, making it difficult for us to live a pure life. I was talking to, I was praying for one of our church members, last prayer and fasting. She approached and she asked for prayers if, um, if you know, can God, can God give her the grace to live a good testimony in her office because um, she's uh, working for a, um, a call center um, office and um, they say that even in, in, that, in that field, they say that especially in the wee hours of the morning, um, impurity, immorality is rampant. And so she's asking for grace to make a stand, to live uprightly, to live a pure and holy life. And not just that, but to also influence her office so that they too you know, can live what the Bible is saying about pure lives. And so in a society that is somehow, it's just one click away, to be in impurity. In a society we're in, somehow it's easier to compromise than to stand upright. How can we live pure? Not to mention this. Meron ka nang weakness, meron ka nang society na ganun, but you also have an enemy. The Bible says in John 10:10, 10, 10, it says there, the thief calls, or otherwise the devil comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy his primary objective, his job description is to steal your purity. His job description is to kill your testimony. His job description is to destroy your life. Can you imagine? I'm not scaring us, okay? But I'm just giving, I'm painting for us what the Bible says about our current reality. We are weak. Our society is going to make, us, make it difficult for us to be pure. And we have an enemy who will rejoice. Kung baga, kung meron siyang checklist. Like for us, we have some faith goals. You know, every start of the year, ang faith goal niya every year is for you to fall. For you to be, your, 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 your purity to be stolen and destroyed. I like how one pastor defined destru destruction. Because sometimes when we think of destruction, sometimes we think of it as, um, you know, it's, it's tearing things apart. But in relation to our morality, in relation to our relationship with God, this is what destruction can mean. It means permanent separation from what could have been. Permanent separation for what could have been. God's desire is for every single one of us to be pure before God. God's desire is for the person seated right next to you to be holy. But the enemy's desire is to permanently separate you from that dream of God. It's to permanently sever you from that plan of God for us. And so, in a world where that is our situation, is it possible to live pure? Is it still possible to live a pure life in, 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 in light of our incapability, in light of our circumstances that is corrupted, in light of the truth that there is an enemy who will do everything and give everything in his arsenal so that you will fail? Is it still possible? Our text today in Psalm 119 actually asks the same question. The Bible says, How can a young man keep his way pure. How can a young man, okay? And when you say young man here, it does not speak only to men, okay? It also speaks to women. How can a young person, in fact, it's not just with young people, but it also speaks to all kinds of people, all, gen all gender, uh, both gender and also in different age groups. Anyone of you here, you see it beside someone who's young. 
Anyone seated beside someone who looks young pa rin? Okay. All right. Tell that person, this message is for you, okay? This message is for you as well. How can we? How can we keep our ways pure? The answer, the psalmist says, by guarding it according to your word. I want to share with us the, for the next, for the remainder of my time, the th- three scriptures, three verses, and three keys here how we can live a pure life. The first one is by guarding it according to your word. But I want to highlight that. The word says keep. Can you say keep? Keep. keep. It says keep. In other words, God has already made this person pure. And the Bible says that anyone who is in Christ, the old is gone and the new has come. In other words, the good news of the Bible is if you have put your faith in Jesus Christ, guess what? You have been forgiven of your past impurities. Not just your past, but even future impurities. That's the power of what Christ has done on the cross for you. Some um, Bible experts call it justified. Can you say justified? Or justification. What it means is just as if we've never sinned. Amazing. The Bible says that God, when you put your faith in Christ, God removes your sin as far as the east is from the west. Amazing promise of God. But yet, we also have a responsibility for us to keep this way pure. The Bible calls that sanctification or how God transforms us every single day to be more like Christ. How do we do that? The key there is to guard. Can you say guard? We hire security guards to protect some things that are valuable, isn't it? We hire security guards to protect a mall or even a facility wherein there are valuable things inside. The same thing is true with what the Word of God is saying. If you value your word with work, uh, your walk with God, if we value our testimony, if we value our relationship with God, what are you willing to do about it? If we value our, your communion with God, if you value the fact that you are a Christian and you say to people that you're a Christian, what are you willing to do about it? The Bible says if you want to keep your testimony, if you want to keep your purity, the Bible says guard it according to the Word. See, the Word of God is the goal and the Word of God also is the one that will guard us you know, in keeping or in pursuing that goal. Kind of like this guardrail, Okay? Um, most of us who would drive here know this. Actually, all of us who drive here, especially if you've um, went through uh, from here, drive all the way north or that road south, if you go through the different expressways that we have. By the way, they say now that when you travel from Manila to Baguio, it takes lesser time. In the past, it would take you about six, seven hours. Now, when you travel to Baguio from Enlex, four hours from Manila to Baguio. Four hours. Imagine that, four hours na lang. Okay? Can they make an expressway all the way up? That'll be fun, isn't it? To have an expressway all the way up. But when you go to an expressway, these are the common things that you will find, those guardrails. Okay? And those guardrails serve a purpose. In fact, by law, you're required to have guardrails whenever there's an incline of 30 degrees or a decline of 30, at least 30 degrees. You have to have guardrails. Especially if there's a sharp curve or it's an accident-prone area, you need to have those guardrails. Why? Those are for your protection. That will make you know that you are in the right lane, that you're on the right side, and that you are far from danger. When you're going near the guardrail, you're going near danger. That's the purpose of a guardrail. It um, uh, prohibits us from experiencing wreckage like this one. I mean, could, ima- could you imagine what could have happened to this truck if not for the guardrail? I mean, ano ba yung nasa loob niya? Is it chicken or beef? Okay. Ah, cow, cow pala. Okay, hindi pala beef. Okay. Beef na siya pagkatapos, so pag nalaglag. But if it, it prevented us from that, and you know what? The same thing is true with our lives. You want, I'm sure, all of us know the sting of sin. All of us here, maybe you yourself can attest to that, or you have been a victim of the impact, the gravity of the impact of sin in our lives. 
Maybe we experience being in a wreck because of certain decisions that we've made in the past. The Bible says if we want ourselves to be protected from making those same mistakes, guard yourself with the word of God. Can you imagine driving in a place like this with no guardrails? Can you imagine the cliff? No, I mean, if that were me, oh man, you're going to drive slow, right? I mean, can you, uh, no, can you drive 120, okay, 120 speed mo in, in this kind of a terrain with no guardrails? It's hard. I mean, but reality is life is like this. We live in a world wherein we have freedom of choice, but we don't have freedom of consequence. That one mistake can have an impact, not just in us, we're with us, but also the people around us. That's the kind of life that we have. And pagka ganito and wala kang guardrails, wow! Can you imagine how slow your life will be without it? That's the beauty. That is the beauty of having, you know, um, guardrails. The, the beauty of having the Bible with us. Some people, they say, Christianity is actually killjoy. They say Christianity kasi, you know, when you read the Bible, dami kasi dyan, mga do's and don'ts. I mean, dami mga, hindi ka pwedeng gawin, hindi ka pwedeng gawin ito, hindi ka pwedeng gawin ito. And so, they think of it as limiting. But yet, if you view things in, in light of the totality of life, you would see that those limitations are actually so that you would have life. Or else, we would end up in misery. Some of my friends before, they say, don't go to a Christian church. Why? Kasi ibi brainwash ka lang dyan. How many of you know our brains need washing? <laughs> really? In light of the filth that we are bombarded with every single day, this brain needs to be washed every single day. And that's the purpose why we have the Bible. It's to protect us. It's to help us be on the right track. It's actually freedom so that we can live life the way God wants it to be. That's why God said to Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Can you say day and night? Day and night. Day and night so that you may be careful to do according to, uh, according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous. Then you will have good success. We want that, isn't it? We want success. We want prosperity. But the key to that, the Bible says, is meditate on the Word of God. Last week, we talked about meditation. It's not, the, um, right? it's not the emptying your mind. It's actually filling your mind with the Word of God. It's to keep thinking about it and speak it and declare. That's what the word meditate means. And so it says here to meditate it day and night. Some of us here, we like to do it in the morning. It's good. Some of us like to read, it in the, read the Bible in the evening. It's also good. The Bible, in fact, encourages us to do it day and night. Day and night. But let me just give you a tip. You know what? I tried it. I tried reading the Bible before I sleep. And some of us, ang, ang bilis talaga ng power ng Bible pagka ginagawa mong gano'n. I mean, just one, two verses and then you're already knocked down. Okay, so we're, you're, you're using it as a, uh, a sleeping pill, okay? But you know, I've also tried reading the Bible in the morning. And guess what? I found out, I realized, there's a different power when you start the day with the Bible. There's, it's just some, something just transforms in a day. Something transforms in your heart. Something, there's something that God does in our hearts whenever we read the Bible in the morning. Somehow we attest to what the Bible says in Matthew 6.33, that if we seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, you know, when we do that first thing in the morning, you know, He makes all things work together for our good. And so I'd like to encourage you, please do, Read the Bible in the morning and see how it, what, how it will affect, affect your day. That's the power of reading the Word of God. For some of us here, maybe you're just new and you're wondering, Pastor, where do I start? Okay, Look at the Psalms. Those are good starts. You look at the Proverbs. Those are full of wisdom. Look at the Gospel so that you will hear and see this, the life of Jesus Christ. How often or how much time do I do it? I remember uh, Pastor Ferdy gave a good tip. He said, five, five, five. Can you say five, five, five? Five, 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 okay? When you say five, that's not sardines, okay? For some of us, you're already thinking of sardines. No, it's five minutes of reading the Bible. It's five minutes of somehow thinking and seeing how that Bible verse relates to you and five minutes of prayer, okay? That's how they do the five, that's how you do five, 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 you know? 
five minutes reading, five minutes analyzing, and five minutes praying. And you start with that. And I kid you not, you know, you will grow more in love with doing it that you will eventually grow. Yung five, five, five mo magiging six. No, wag lang six. Medyo mahirap yung six. Okay, it will grow to um, maybe uh, 10, 10, 10, okay? Or uh, 20, 20, 20, okay? But the point is, you know, you will grow in your walk with God the more that you do this, okay? The Bible also says this um, in Psalm 19. My, with my whole heart, I seek you. Can you say seek? seek? Second key here is not just to guard, but also to seek. When you're seeking something, it involves a search, isn't it? It takes time. It takes effort. I'm reminded of, um, you know, people who are searching for gold or treasure. You know what they do? They have that gadget, that um, metal detectors, those metal detectors. You know that? You know what I'm talking about? Um, this gadgets, devices that are, you know, may bakal dyan, tas may, pla- may plate dun sa ilalim or this, this brown thing that somehow when you sweep an area, you can, when it beeps and beeps fast, you know that you're going closer to a treasure. But then when you understand and we try to imagine how they do it, they're very methodical. They're very methodical. They would somehow, you know, um, um, do it in a straight line like this and then they would... Um, cross in another line and so they would patiently patiently do this for hours until they find a treasure and then when they hear something because usually it's just beep 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 but then when they when they hear it beep 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 i mean they get excited when they do that and then when they finally found the air where there's treasure they dig it up and then when they do find it they are full of joy because they found the treasure See, I guess that is a picture as well when the Bible says, seek the Lord through His Word. There are moments, isn't it, that you just read the Bible in Genesis 1. It's just beep, beep, Genesis 2, beep, beep, Genesis 3, beep, beep, Genesis Leviticus, beep. <laughs> 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 when you reach the When you reach the other scriptures, when you read, beep. Beep, Genesis 7, beep, 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 beep. And then you encounter a powerful verse that strikes your heart. Wow, that is like mining a treasure. But you have to search. You have to methodically do the search. The Bible says also, I like how the psalmist put it, with whole hearts, with my whole heart, I seek you. Have you ever sought something without a heart have you ever read the bible with just reading and no heart it's hard it's hard to understand what the bible is saying if you're not if you're going to read it as a duty and not out of a relationship if you're just going to read it because your victory group leader tells you or because the pastor told you or because you have to wow you're going to miss it because when we read the bible we have to have our whole hearts that is why my encouragement to you before you read the scriptures, pray to God and ask Him, Lord, align my heart today as, I read my, as you read your word. Open my heart as I read your word so that I would see you and be able to seek you. When you say um, whole heart, the Bible confirms this in Jeremiah 29 verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. There it is again. You see, God will not reveal himself to casual seekers. God will not reveal himself to casual seekers. The Bible says we have to seek him with all our hearts. With all our hearts. See, um, there's some people, they think of the Bible as, uh, you know, um, it's so holy that they would even put it in a glass container, okay? So no one can touch it. Or sometimes it's so holy, you don't want to touch it, it's just accumulating dust, okay? I mean, you have to, um, with all your heart, read it and allow it to speak to you and allow it to, allow it to minister to you every single day. Um, some people, what they do is they just uh, put the Bible under their beds before they sleep, Okay? They're hoping that by virtue of osmosis, whatever is written there, you know, would trans- be transferred, you know, to your, uh, to your mind. But that's not the case. The Bible commands us, seek Him and seek Him with all our heart. In fact, speaking of, you know, doing it methodically, do you know that you can have ways 
um, how to appreciate the Bible better. One way is by reading it aloud and reading it in several vo- tones. Like uh, at first, maybe you can read a particular passage of Scripture with a loud voice and then try to read it with a soft voice. Every now and then, you can also change emphasis, or as some of my friends would put it, emphasis. Okay, so you can change that. Like for example, this one. You can read it as, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. You can also change that with your name and say, you know, rich can seek me and find me when rich seeks me with all of his heart. Somehow it changes meaning, isn't it? When you change that. Or you can put the emphasis on, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Somehow there's a guarantee that is available for us, isn't it? That when we seek Him, we will find Him. Or you can put the emphasis on when, okay? Diba? When you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. When it says when, it means whether it's in the morning or in the evening or in the afternoon, it doesn't matter. Because when we seek Him, we will find him try doing that when you read the bible try doing that if somehow you encounter a treasure and somehow but then try doing that try changing emphasis try to understand it try to study the words because when you do you will be able to unearth the treasures that god wants you to have that day finally it says there in verse 10 with my whole heart i seek you let me not wonder from my commandments okay i want to highlight that not wonder um, it means that it actually keeps us it's like an anchor that you know as much as an anchor it does not you know it, it, it allows a ship to not be swayed by the waves the same thing is true with the word of god sad news that um read a few days ago um one of our um, uh, media companies put it this say that for the fourth straight year now, Filipinos spend most, the most time on porn sites. In fact, according to that study, um, this is how the breakdown was. Now, on average, the Philippines, top dito, medyo nakakahiya lang, ano, na kung saan tayo nagtatap. Pero, on this one, can you imagine it's more and more a norm for Filipinos to do it? It's a norm. This is that wave here in the Philippines. But yet, if you are anchored on God, even though this is the wave, if the, even if this is the norm, we can still live pure and upright lives. We can have um, purity in our lives, even if, the Bible says, if the enemy comes on you like a flood, the, the Lord will raise up a standard for us in that. And that is true also in this one. Bible says in verse 11, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Guard, seek, and store. Store the word of God in you so that we would live pure lives. I'm reminded of my son. And um, my son, when we were, when he was still young, he was, he's seven years old now. And um, when he was like, I think about five years old, I would bring him to the bank to do bank errands. And Whenever we would go to the bank and go to an ATM. And so I'd put my card and then key in a few numbers and then tap in some buttons there. And money will come out. I remember the first time that that happened. You know, when we went to uh, an ATM. I remember the first time that it happened. He was so shocked. I just placed my card and I just key in some numbers and money came out. Wow, 500, 1,000 pesos. And he was saying, wow, dad, can you do it again? And so, yeah, they'll do it again, and then money came out. I think it left a huge imprint in him that one time when we were in a toy shop, you know, he was looking at this nice toy, but very expensive. And he was looking, I said, my son, you know, he wants me to buy that toy. And I said, sorry, son, I don't have cash. Dad, let's go to that machine again, okay? <laughs> you just put in your card, just type in some numbers, and money will come out, okay? <laughs> Parang feeling na ngayon mga bata yata, ganun lang kadali, ano, magic. Okay. But how many of you know you can only withdraw what you have in the bank, what you have stored in the bank? You know, every single day, 
there will be plenty of withdrawals from our spiritual bank accounts from this world, with this world. The problems will try to withdraw from you. The challenges in life will try to withdraw from you. How much of the Word of God do we have in us so that we will be, won't be bankrupt? How much of the Word of God is living inside of us so that we would have a huge account so that we can every single time, you know, withdraw? And even the Holy Spirit would highlight certain things upon us. We would have words that would be very timely for certain situations, but that has to start from us depositing the Word of God in us. There's this man, as I close, and I'd like to ask the keyboard player and the music team to get ready. There's this man um, in the, I think about 1920s when this story um, happened. William McPherson worked as a coal miner. And in one of, I don't know if you know about this story, but in one of, uh, um, in one day rather, as they were trying to blast certain parts of this mountain, an accident happened and, you know, the explosion went to him and affected him severely. Um, he lost his two arms in the process and it severely burned his body, his face, and even lost his eyesight. William, though, is a lover of God. He's a Christian and he loves to read the Word of God and if there's one regret that he had at that time, you know, losing his limbs and losing his vision, is that he won't be able to read the Bible anymore. And so, good news came to him when one of um, his friends told him, you can actually read the Bible in Braille because there are Braille bi Bibles available. And so he had to learn how to read Braille. And so he was thinking, what can I do? What can I use so that I would be able to read Braille? And then he heard another story of a woman who somehow would use her lips Okay, because of the sensitivity of the lips, would, she would use the lips to read Braille. And so the first time that he got a, a, a Braille um, in a book, and as he was trying to re, uh, you know, uh, study it, the moment that the Braille touched his lips, his heart shrank. Because for some reason, the, the blast also severed or destroyed the nerve endings or nerves on the lips. And so there are feelings. And so, crying to God, he fell asleep at that day and fell asleep on that braille. As he was sleeping, he was woken up by the sensation, the feeling when his tongue touched the braille. And so, tuwa siya kasi yung tongue niya can still feel. And so, because of that, he studied braille with his tongue. And not just that, 65 years after the incident happened, he was able, William McPherson was able to read the Bible from cover to cover four times using his tongue. Amazing, isn't it? That's how much he valued the Word of God. That's how much he wanted to store the Word of God in his heart. That's how much he was dedicated in seeking and guarding his heart with the Word of God. You know, I'm praying that for at least man lang siguro kahit kalahati ng passion niya, di ba? I'm praying that the same passion that William had would be the same passion in all of us. I'm praying that this year, as we start 2018, I'm praying that every single day of 2018, we will be successful this year in reading the Bible. I'm praying that for some of us here, maybe you've, you've never read the Bible from cover to cover, I pray that you would be inspired by that man and be able to read the Bible from cover to cover all the way to the maps this year. May God give us the grace to do that. You know why? Again, we asked the question earlier. Why? Why do we need to read the Bible? Why? How can we live a pure life? And how is the Bible you know, be able to do that? I want to close with this scripture. In fact, I want to ask you to please stand up as I read this last slide. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3.18, And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, that is reading the Bible, as uh, indicated there in the context. When you read the Bible more, when you meditate on the Bible more, when you read about who Christ is, when you read about the Lord that is being preached, you know, in the Bible, we will be transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another 
For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. How can we live pure lives? How can we be holy? Is if you behold the Bible and the God of the Bible who is holy. When you behold the holiness of God in this Bible, that is what will make us holy. When you interact with the person, Jesus Christ, that is being preached here in the Bible, that is what will make us holy. My prayer is that this will be true for us, that more and more we will be transformed to the image of Christ. Amen? Can we close our eyes and pray? Lord, we thank you for this time. God, Lord, for some of us, Lord, who perhaps, Lord God, last year, um, Lord, we've not been consistent, Lord God, in reading your word and, Lord, the spiritual discipline of getting to know you as we read the word. Father, thank you that this year, Lord, we can look, Lord, leave the past behind and look forward to what is ahead. Father, we declare in Jesus' name, there's going to be grace for us, Lord, to read the Bible every day. Lord, some of us here, we read it in the evening, some of us read it in the morning. Lord, whatever time we choose, Lord, thank you that you will visit us. You will allow us to see you, not just see the letters, but see you, Jesus, as we read those letters. Thank you that you will open up our ears, and we will be able to hear your words, Lord, as we open up the scriptures for ourselves. Lord, you are always faithful in communicating to us. Father, give us the grace to listen every single day, Lord. Give us the grace to listen. Father, thank you. Lord, you want to create, Lord God, a strong army. You want to create a strong family in us, oh God. People who are so founded rooted and grounded in your word that no matter what storm is raging or no matter what storm is around us though we would be rooted and anchored in your word we will be strong lord god because your word is treasured stored inside of us lord in jesus name i declare let there be lord god let there be a rich grace abundant grace upon all of us here to love your word in a new way this year. In Jesus' name. You know, as all heads are closed, uh, all heads are bowed and all eyes are closed, I believe that some of us here, as we were talking about purity earlier, some of us here can identify with, you know, the impact of impurity in our, is in our lives. Maybe you've been a victim of someone else's impurity. Maybe the impurity of the generations prior to you has severely affected your kind of life this year. Uh, you know, your kind of life. Maybe you yourself, you've made some decisions that somehow is affecting your life. I believe that the Bible is true when it says there is hope for people like you and me. You know what the Bible says? If you want to be set free from that, if you want to experience the purity that God gives, it is grace. It is a work of God's grace. It is a gift that God gives. And I just want to offer, I believe some of us here need to make this decision to receive this gift that God gives of forgiveness, of cleansing, of purity. It starts by receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And so today, if you want to say, yes, Lord, I want to turn away from my impure life and I want to receive you, Jesus, Today, as my Lord and Savior, can I ask you, with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, can I ask you to lift up your hands so that I know who to pray for? Yes. Many hands lifted up right now. Praise God. Can we just um, put our hands down? Lord, thank you. May you, Lord God, enter into their lives, Lord. In fact, if you're doing this for the first time, I'd like for you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me so that I can be forgiven so that I can be free Lord thank you that because of you I can receive wholeness I can be pure and so today I turn away 
from everything that the Bible calls sin. And today, I declare that you, Jesus, are my Lord and my Savior. Help me, Lord, to live a life that is pleasing to you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.